Here we go. Right. We are live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the last drop. I am Chris. Uh, another, yeah, impromptu live stream with my lovely whiskey team friends. Here we go. It's Alan from the, the Whiskey Friend himself and Prestige Liquids Andrew Down Under. I haven't flipped him up. I forgot to do that. Damn it. Uh, that's really <laughs> annoying. I should have put him back up You're the wrong way. Or you. <laughs> Give me a second. Yeah. Go stand on your head, Andrew. <laughs> cool. Well, that's all right. That's streaming. We're all good. Uh, so, yeah. Go for it, Alan. Introduce yourself. Hi everyone, I'm Alan. Well, I don't know if there's anybody watching yet, but I'm Alan yeah. anyway, uh, the whiskey friend. Um, nice to be here. Hope we have a nice, friendly chat with everyone. I uh, hope it's not too boring. Um, that's about me, I think. Yeah, happy days. Cool. Uh, Andrew? Hi there, guys. Um, see, my name is Andrew from Prestige Liquids WW. Um, again, just another little... Um, uh, so just another little live impromptu um, video that we're doing with these fine gentlemen. So hopefully it all goes well. Nobody kills each other, and um, we'll have ourselves a, a good chat today. So uh, I'll pass it back on to you, Chris, cool. and um, you can play the host. Right, cool. Right, so today we just had, we we've literally just made this up on the spot. It's completely impromptu. It's just really to test my little Mikey here. Uh, and another little chat. We're going to taste, uh, we're not going to taste, well, we are tasting whiskies, but we're going to talk about our first epiphany whiskey. Um, yeah, so it's going to be an interesting one. Uh, Andrew's going to take it first. All right, guys, so for me, uh, well, it was my first um, epiphany whiskey was by far definitely the uh, the Lafroy 10. Um, I remember I was uh, I was over at my cousin's house, and again we'll just I, I said probably as most stories generally start out, we were all just sitting around having a, a nice chat with each other. We were talking about whiskey. And I think at that stage, I was pretty much only drinking uh, like Jack Daniels and and um, the Johnny Walker Black Label. And pretty much then, all I would do was just pretty much mix it with Coke. So your, your standard um, welcome into whiskey, always having it pre-mixed. <laughs> I, I think back then, I'd never really drank it straight or that much. Um, and then... I remember, we were just talking about all these other different whiskies that we had tried. And my cousin's dad, he brings out, he, he goes inside and he goes, oh, look, I'm going to bring this out for you. I bet you've probably never tried this before. So he comes outside, brings out the bottle of the Lafroy 10, and he goes, here, see what you think of that. So we pop the cork on the bottle and just, I just remember instantly being like enveloped in this whole massive aroma of peat and smoke and all the you know, typical uh, Lafroy iodine, the salty characteristics. It was like you were, um, it was like you were burning a log fire on a beach. It was just absolutely incredible. And I guess being the, the, the classy kids that we were, we didn't have any, <laughs> we didn't have any glassware with us at the time. So there we go, just <laughs> chugged out the bottle. And um, yeah, that was my very first sip of Lafroy 10. And I just remember being absolutely blown away by that whiskey. It was absolutely incredible. Um, I think at the moment, I don't think I've really, I've had other whiskies that I've come across that have made me go, wow, this is absolutely incredible. But um, I don't know about you guys, but none of them have really had the um, the same impact that the Lafroy 10 has had on me. I just wish that I could try the cask strength because I think that would be absolutely incredible. <laughs> uh, I'll say, how, how about you, Alan? 
Oh, I th- well, I think I've told this story a couple of times, but um, obviously I was collecting whiskey long before I was drinking it. Um, and I actually purchased a bottle at auction, and it was the Glendronach 15. And I actually decided to take a little chance to go up to Glasgow and meet up with some friends, and at the same time pick up from the, the auction house. So obviously I picked the bottle up, went and met my, my mates, went to his flat, Dropped the bottle off. Oh, nice. Dropped the bottle off, went out, had a great night. Ended up back at his flat. There was a bottle of Glendronach 15 sitting around there, and I thought, let's crack it open. So we cracked it open, and that was whiskey. Just everything changed. Um, All those dark fruits, everything. It was just, we sat up till six in the morning, and we almost polished it off. So ever since then, I've been sampling all different things of whiskey that's what turned me from a that was the bottle that turned me from a collector to a, to a drinker uh, and obviously the rest is history i've come on and started doing stuff on youtube but oh, you don't want to be doing that um anthony because uh, andrew because i've got a few here myself i think it's uh <laughs> you, see that one? That one? you see that one uh that's a that's the best one you got alan <laughs> and i've got that one Oh, I've got that one. None of the rest are handmade, Alan. Oh, no, absolutely. Me. This this is my favourite one. Absolutely my favourite. In fact, I might even pop it on there now. It's not very there good as a lid. But... <laughs> it's got holes in it. I think I just got a new one as well somewhere. Let me see if I can find my new one. Oh, I've got that one. You were flashing there as well. The Vins mm-hmm. one. Yeah. I've got a gold one. I've got a I've gold got one. 217. Solid gold. Solid gold at Eric Waits. <laughs> <laughs> That's Eric Waits. Yeah. Nice. Uh, I've got a... uh, should we do a couple yeah, of... That was... That uh, the Glenn Drone Up 15 was the one that changed, it. changed everything. Um, and it's still to this day. It's, it's... I'm still buying those bottles at auction. Because uh, I'm still preferring the old one to the. I've tried the new one and it's it's not the same as the old one. So I'm still having to pick up some old ones at auction. Um, Is there a very big difference, Alan, between the um, between the old one and the the current release of the Glendronic 15, yeah, the, or the, the, very the, subtle? The, yeah, no, the new one's nice. Um, but see, the old this is this is the old one. This is the one it's all about. Uh, this is all Oloroso, but the new the new one is both Oloroso and PX. Ah, uh, ah okay, yep. So no, I've I've I'm loving this the Oloroso one. That's that's super. Got, um... Um, but it, 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 the good thing is that the new one because the new ones came out, the prices are coming down on these ones ah. at auction. So it's not as much a crazy demand because as I say, the new ones there. But yeah, no, it's they're both nice, but I just I prefer the old one. I've got a um yeah. a selection of three Glendronics um that Paul Gibb sent me. Uh, I'm going to try and do a little little video of all three, a little comparison video of the Glendronics. Which looking forward to that one. Oh yeah, which one? <laughs> yeah, which ones have you got? Uh, I think I've got the eighteen. I don't. Yeah, eighteen. Um. And I don't know about the other ones. Definitely the 18. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. You'll have to wait and see, Alan. Come on. Take You'll it. have to wait and see. Oh, well, I'm happy to wait, mate. I'm happy be to wait. First, I can always wait for a nice first viewer. Runner. You can be that first viewer. Make sure you hit that bell well. button. <laughs> You'll get a notification <laughs> when it comes up. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm surprised you've not, you've not used that line yet, but... Yeah, it's a good like. Yeah, obviously yeah. everybody should Just be keep... subscribing. I think everybody in the chat is subscribed. Keep... <laughs> we yeah. got, who we got? We've got uh, <laughs> Party Sources in, uh, Matt's in. I hope you're feeling well, Matt. Paulie. Um, Hi, John. Oh, oh, look at that. Poor, poor little Matt's feeling too sick to join <laughs> us today. Oh, poor guy. <laughs> poor little guy. Um, Whiskey yeah. Pilgrim's in. How are you doing? Uh, ben the Whiskey Geek's in, hiya, and Stuart, um, Whiskey Wims is in. 
Mark's nice losing job. now as well, so yeah. Hey Mark, how are you doing? Yeah, we've got... we've got three other people besides us in exactly, the chat. Yeah. <laughs> so bizarre, but... Yeah. So back back to <laughs> Epiphany Whiskies. Um... That's uncalled for, Matthias. <laughs> What's he said? I'm gooey. Yeah, we yeah. already discussed your gooey video. Um... <laughs> in the form of gifts. Uh, yeah. yeah. So back, back to Epiphany with. Um, just kidding. I, my first wish, uh, which I bought and uh, was Ockentushin Triple Wood, but I wouldn't say that was my. Uh, it was not a bad first whiskey. In fact, I want to try it again because obviously palettes develop, things like that. I'd love to go back and see what it's like now that I've had lots of other different whiskeys. Um, I'll, I'll send you some if you oh, want cool. some. Cheers, Al. <laughs> uh, but my Epiphany whiskey was definitely uh, Nika from the barrel. Uh, Japanese whiskey, our strength, I think... As soon as you start trying something that's got strength, it does lighten up your whiskey world, I think. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's not the most complex, but it was definitely one of those points where I tried it. I love Japanese culture, all that. Sushi's a bit of... Uh, yeah, Japanese whiskey, went to that. Yeah, just... I think I just, yeah, fell in love with whiskey from drinking that. Epiphany. Uh, there we go. That was my Epiphany whiskey. <laughs> uh, I find the, I know for myself, the funny thing is with the, the knicker from the barrel. Yeah. The first time I had that, the first bottle that I bought, I hated it. I could not stand it. I'm thinking, what the hell is this crap? <laughs> and I think for me, I have to probably put that down to more so for the fact that um, I had never really tried or too many cast strength, cast strength whiskies at that time. Yeah. So I probably wasn't used to the um, to the ABV hit, but I just I could not handle the flavor of that whiskey. And then I think it was I actually ended up drinking about half of it and then i just gave the bottle away to a friend wow. <laughs> uh, i said here I, I don't go for it i know you like it enjoy it so i figured i'd rather give it to somebody who actually enjoyed it than waste it on myself so uh, but then i think was it last year or the year before um i ended up getting one as a as a christmas present and i'm thinking oh man why of all whiskies? Why of all whiskies did it have to be this? <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, like, you know what, stop it. It's been quite some time since I last had it. Uh, I I poured a, a glass for myself and for my uh, for my friends that bought me the bottle. And I go, all right, guys, here, let's see how we go. And um, yeah, after that, fell in love with it. I think, and to say now, I think that it is an absolutely incredible whiskey. And for the price as well, I mean, even in Australia, um, for a cast strength, in, like Japanese whiskey especially, you can pick those up for quite a decent price. Yeah, no, I've only tried that the once. It was when um, Food Quick was in Manchester. All right. uh, we met up, some, went for some food, and that was the whiskey that he chose at the to have the food so it was uh, well last recollection it was it was quite nice yeah but it was powerful stuff yeah it's good, it's uh, good. Right, it yeah that abv really does um help it out uh obviously it's you know a non-age statement and all that but it's and yeah uk I, um, andrew do you get it in a 70 cent litre bottle in the uk uh, in australia is it in the uk it only comes in a 50 it's 50, yeah. it's 50 here yeah, isn't it and it comes as yeah, 50, it's 50. Yeah, it's the uh, it's the yeah, fifty fifty uh, fifty C or five hundred uh, milliliter bottle. Yeah, I think I think in the US it is seventy. Don't quote me on that. Pretty sure I've seen it on uh, I, other reviews as as seventy in the states. 
You use the final states, they get 750s, I mm. think, and everything. I think everything else is a 750 bottle. Sure, somebody would tell us in yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one thing that I don't understand as well that they do where, uh, like, okay, say so take something like Lafroy 10, for example. I mean, in, uh, in Australia, we get it to us at the 40%, um, so at 40% ABV. Then you might go to the US or something and they'll have it for 43. There's, I've noticed whiskies that for some reason that um, will get it for a certain ABV level and then another country will get it for a slightly higher. Yeah. I, th I think America gets everything 43, I think. Yeah. I think. There were things that we get 40, I think America get it at 43. Um, I think it's, and it's 43 and it's 750 bottles. Yeah. Um, it's on all of them. <laughs> yeah, I, it, it makes you envious. I'm thinking, well, if they can send it, um, say to the US for that, <laughs> yeah. uh, at that at that strength, I mean, why can't the rest of us get it? It's not fair. <laughs> they end up with an extra dram. I don't know what's up with that. <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> How's that fair? Um, anyway, well, we... you guys are from the UK, and you can't even get that. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Who we got? We got what we're going in the chats. Uh, ben Whiskey Geek is saying that his, I presume he's saying his epiphany was Del Winnie 1986, straight from the cask. Oh, Sounds nice. Thanks. Nice and old. Uh, so, Alan, do you have that on your show? <laughs> Say that again. No, I don't. I don't have any Del Winnie, to be fair, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> I might need to look into Del Winnie, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's some samples kicking around, but I don't, there's no bottles. That, I haven't got any yeah. bottles, uh, bottles of that one. Yeah. Too many. I know I've got a few, but I've not got everything. <laughs> Just close enough to it. <laughs> uh, well, Whiskey Pilgrim is saying, uh, try the Yauchi 10-year-old. Uh, in fact, I have tried the Yauchi 12-year-old, uh, which um, the delightful Gregoire... From Greg's whiskey guide uh, sent me, uh, and that was amazing stuff. Really nice Japanese single malt. Was it ten? Probably twelve. I think it was twelve. But yeah, it, it's a crazy retail price on that bottle now. Like thousands. Seems ludicrous, but you know. Cool. Chris is Matt Slinger still in? Uh, I think he is. Uh... Yeah, Mark. I'm going to try your Glen Murray, Mark. Ooh. I've got a Glen Murray eight-year-old Marzella cask finish. I'm going to pop Marsala. a little bit of that. Marsala, yeah. Marsala cask finish, eight-year-old. Ten, ten, sorry, ten-year-old. Bottle your own, 57.8. Looks oh, pretty good, Thomas McCorian. McCory. Give me that whiskey, boy. <laughs> All right. Which one's that? Uh, Thomas McCory. Uh, yeah. yeah, and then we got yeah. Sure, I just to, is just talking a lot. I just want to go back to this um, in the comments. Um, something that Ben, the whiskey geek, had mentioned um, when we were talking um, when we were talking about the nicker from the barrel, oh. like how he was saying that the climate can make a big difference too. Like he was saying, if it was baking hot over like in Australia. Um, it would be a different experience to a Drury day over here in the UK. And I'd have to agree, I think that's 100% right. Um, obviously, there are some whiskies that on a hot day, you're just going to want to stay away from <laughs> in comparison to, say, if it's a cold day. Um, so have you guys found that much yourself? What, like summer, summer um, and winter yeah. Or in the UK, does summer and winter just kind of blend together and you don't really notice much? Yeah, I mean, we, well, next week is supposed to be hot, which we're all really looking forward to. Uh, I think pretty much most people I know are going to start whinging as of... Oh, it's so hot. I can't... But, um... In Australia, we say that that's a typical British trait. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Whinging palms, eh? 
<laughs> yep. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think it's going to what hit twenty eight. I think on Wednesday, Thursday this week. The UK <clears throat> is pretty hot. <laughs> yeah, uh, I remember the the first time that uh, myself and my and my family we took a, a fa our first overseas family um, holiday. Um, we went to visit my mum's family in Finland. It was the first time that she had ever gone over to see them. And all over the radio, they were having, and on TV as well, they were having all these health warnings coming up, saying, oh, make sure that you stay inside, make hydrated. Uh, if you go outside, make sure you wear a hat and um, say wear um, like breathable clothing and things like that, that there's elderly people being hospitalized due to this heat wave that they had going through the country. That heat wave was 27 degrees. <laughs> and I was saying, we just couldn't understand how the hell that they were finding that so hot when we're so used to having, say, 40 degree um, plus summers. While we're walking around like, oh man, this is so nice and relaxing. This is so comfortable. And they're breaking a sweat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it's crazy. But did you see, because I mean, going back to like how weather affects like um, the whiskey and stuff like that, I mean, not just the maturation, but did you see the Whiskey Tribe video on um, Waterford on Saturday, yesterday? I still haven't seen uh, that yet. I mean, amazing. Uh, I mean, I've watched, I've watched, I've watched bins, and I've watched, um, blah, 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 dummies, uh, I forget that, um, yeah. and, yeah, the, the Whiskey Tribe one really did go into a lot of depth, but it was a really, really good video, it's probably one of their best videos they've done ever, I think, yeah, I'm gonna put that out there, Whiskey Tribe's Best video ever, Waterford Distillery. Um, the terroir yeah. sort of section of it, where they're taking the grain from almost farms next to each other, but the you're getting the uh, difference in from each grain, like you know, two three miles away, you can tell the difference in those yeah. in the new makes coming from those grains. Uh, yeah, and then yeah, they're just sort of going not overboard, but they're saying right, well that affects this and that affects that. Maybe not. They're not trying to predict anything, but they're saying, well, this is the route this whiskey has taken to get to this flavor profile, and it's got this lovely yeah. transition all the way through it. And a really, really good video, and really worth watching it. Get the chance. No, I definitely. This is will not get a paid promotion. They have not just... paid me in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. It's incredibly disappointing. <laughs> I'm angry about it now. <laughs> There's just so many videos to watch. Too many to yeah, watch. I mean, it's difficult when you're doing a whiskey review every day. What can you do? Hard. One, oh, doing one a week is hard enough. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I struggle. Uh, it's a, it takes me over a month just to do one video, and and like you said, they they're doing it every day of the week. I mean, it's absolutely unbelievable the amount of content um, that they have going. I mean, obviously they have people behind the scenes, but um, still, I mean, the the volume that they're pumping out is absolutely incredible. Is indeed, but yeah, I think they're struggling uh, at I the moment. It's it's taken that sort of trip for them to, to own in to what they they can they can do, um, which is really difficult. I don't know what I'm saying. Well, that's the thing. I guess when they, I guess for them, when they say stuck at home. Um, they're sticking to a formula. They're they're doing, say, their Friday, their rare whiskey Friday thing. They're having their usual um, whiskey tribe shenanigans and other reviews that they're doing. Um, just by them, say, going 
somewhere completely different just uh, makes it possible for them to break away from what they would normally do and to try something completely different. I mean, I've noticed the difference myself in their videos when they will go to visit, say even if they go to visit another distillery, uh, content is a lot different to what they would normally do on their on their regular shows. So yeah. a, a change of environment makes a big difference to the, I think, to the type of work you're going to be putting out there. And for them going to a completely different country, uh, it, it will be such an eye-opening experience for them as well. And I think that's what I liked uh, about the Scotch Test Dummies um, video when, um, say, when they did their Waterfords uh, tour and all that kind of thing. It was being able to see and experience what it's like to go to another um, country, experience a different culture. Um, it, it makes a big impact on you. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I mean, I'd... And of course, watching Bart struggling with the, the UK slang, uh, <laughs> that was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that's uh, one thing that we'd have to do when we eventually are able to get Antonio on the chat. Um, I think especially the three of us and when we get Anthony in as well, just start throwing all the UK Aussie slang at him and see <laughs> and see how he goes. <laughs> well, I'm, sure, I'm sure they'll just chuck his American slang and then we'll be the same. Yeah, but we've heard it all on telly. Yeah, but- <laughs> yeah, all right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, I think at the moment, why don't we have a little um, talk about what we're drinking at the moment? Uh, Chris, why don't you give us some notes and let us know what your what you're having at the time, at, say at this time? Well, I've nearly finished. Well, this, I, c- I can't tell you because it's a spoiler alert. Otherwise, um, ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it quickly pour something it's else. Basically, uh, Glen Fittich, Fire and Cane. So it's a non-age <laughs> statement, uh, Glen Fittich. It is uh, finished in. Rum, selected South American rum barrels uh, for the last three months of its uh, maturation period. So uh, it's got a sweet note to it, and hence the sugar cane, I guess. Uh, mm. And it's a slightly smoky as well. So Stuart's saying it's uh, is too sickly. I like it. It's all right. Is say so, is it a gone. very sweet whiskey? Overly sweet. I've had sweeter. Yet. Um, it's not as sweet as some sherry casks. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's got a nice bit of smoke on the end. That so. Yeah, I think uh, Mark's just saying he's just finished off a bottle. Probably won't buy it again. And we would agree, it's nice. I'm glad I've tried it. Not one I would buy again. So, Alan, what are yeah. you drinking? Oh, I'm I'm drinking something special. Oh, oh. What about what's in your glass? I'm on though? this Glen Murray. What's Dig in your glass, though? Yeah, yeah, Glen Murray. Bottle your own. Mass Salah cask finish. Ten year old at fifty seven point eight. And it's awesome. It's it's fruity. Tropical fruit, lots of tropical fruits. A little bit of spice. It's just floral and fruity, and that little. There's a little bit of spice in the background as well. But yeah, it's it's spectacular. Complex as hell. See, I've, only, see, I've only poured it, so it's but it's you kind of take your nose out of it. Mm. It's it, it's just it's very it, you can you can pick up the wine as well. It's got a wine in the background as well. But it's beautiful, it's awesome. There's just something about those cast strengths, isn't there? That um, that just completely that makes them so completely different to say your regular say forty or say forty five percent ABV, isn't there? Mark saying it was fifty five quid. Well, Mark, I'd have a bottle of this, mate. 
If you're ever <laughs> passing by, get me a bottle of that, man. I know you're you're up Mark's there, aren't you? Always so passing by in like many, many distilleries. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. So it just bounces around but all of them. If, if if this is fifty-five quid, then it's incredible. For fifty-five quid. So that's the that's the Glen Murray, is it? Yeah, Glen Murray bought his bottle. Your own. Yeah. Uh, um, but it's awesome. Oh, he's saying that barrel's gone, but the new one is Port Pipe. What was that? What's Port All Pipe right. then? I don't know. You know? That's fifty-five as well, yeah. just as good. So. What was? You know, I I remember recently I was able to try. Uh, I think it was the Glen Moray Port Cask, and so I had noticed that my at my local liquor store they just had this massive range of um, Glen Moray pop up all of a sudden. Like, like they had their standard release, the ten-year-old Chardonnay Port. All these different um, Glen Murray uh, range, and I was able to pull off the of the port cast. But uh, it, to be honest, it was horrible. It, it was like drinking cordial. I remember it just being so sweet, but uh, so watery as well. Um, definitely, I say definitely not something that I'd be picking up anytime soon. I'm glad that I was able to try it as a sample rather than actually going to buy the bottle. Um, See, this is this is why I love getting samples because now I'd, I'd search this out and find the bottle and buy it. Yeah, that's the beauty of samples. That's why I have lots and lots of samples because it gives you the idea. Now you're not wasting your money to go and buy something that you're not going to like. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I guess whenever the when I guess whenever those opportunities come around, you should definitely snatch them up. That's like even the other day, also the other day, yesterday, I had gone to the to the liquor store and I was walking past their their samples counter and I noticed that they had uh, the Basil Hayden's uh, bourbon there as well. So I thought, oh, awesome! I've been wanting to try that. So. I went over to the to the lady at the checkout counter. I'm like, can I please try that? She goes, yep, no worries. Um, yeah, that was actually quite nice. I was surprised. Very, very peppery and a very spicy um, bourbon. Only 40%, but it felt a lot stronger than, um, than what it was. I mean, at the moment, I'm drinking the, um, the Elijah Craig small batch, and this is at 47%. Um, but it drinks so much easier. I mean, it feels more like a, maybe say like a 40, 42. Um, but, that Basil, but that Basil Hayden's actually um, packed a lot more of a, of a punch. So that was, that was very interesting. Cool. Uh, old baggies just dropped yeah. in. <laughs> Hi, Andy. How are you doing? Hope. Hey, yeah, Andy. Yeah. Bye. Hi. Hola. 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 <laughs> How can you remember Hello. hola? <laughs> You've been drinking. <laughs> oh, that's gone. Yeah. Oh. This, this just smells so good, man. Mm. I think it actually smells but a little bit better than it tastes. You often find that with a lot of whiskeys, though, yeah. don't you? They, they do... The smell can be so much more smells awesome. intoxicating. Really gets into you. You're like, oh, that's interesting. Get some floral notes or some hay or you know, you know, all those sort of different things. And uh, mm. and then you taste it and you're like, oh, okay, well, it's not as good. It's nice, but um, yeah, it's maybe not as complex as the the nose. The nose is always. Well, then this is floral. It's perfumed. It's even you know, it's it's super sweet. It's everything. Sounds good. I think um, blood blood knock is definitely an exception to that rule. Um, I found that's one whiskey that smells absolutely horrible, but the taste is incredible. What was that? Uh, blood knock. The uh, blood uh, blood knock. I believe it's a I believe it's a lowland um, whiskey. Um, yeah, like I said the the nose on that is horrible. I I think I mentioned it in the chat. 
uh, last week. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was at a body shop and, and they had it as a sample there and the guy asked me if I wanted to try it. And I thought, yeah, okay, no worries, give it a go. And I think I was, at the time I was standing probably about 10 metres away from the table. He opened up the bottle and I'm just thinking, what the hell is that smell? <laughs> it was absolutely horrible. <laughs> but when I tried it, uh, the flavour was incredible. Cool. As I, let's see if anybody uh, has anybody in the in the chat. Have any of you guys ever tried um, Vladnok at all? Or say, or Alan, do you have Vladnok in? Nope. No. Nope. Nope. No Vladnok. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not a Lowland fan. Yeah. I'm, well, I can I can try and find somebody that's in the radar. But Blad not might come up later on, but mm. but yeah, it's, I've not come across that much. It's up and down. It's a distillery. It keeps opening and closing, and they keep putting out new bottles, and then they disappear for donkeys, and then it comes back again. But but yeah, no, it's it's not one of them I come across very often. Yeah, is that with the, the Blad knock you're saying? Blad knock, Blad knock yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, like you're I've, saying I've it's nasty the, stuff. Yeah, I've got the... the I, mean, I, was, the I was trying to be polite, Chris. <laughs> I've, I've got the, the Samsara and the, and the 10-year-old. Um, and like I said, the the smell is horrid, but it, it, it actually tastes pretty good. <laughs> it's very surprising. It's, it's a total contrast to this um, Elijah Craig, that's for sure. Um, I think this is my first time trying the, this is the first bottle of Elijah Craig that I've ever bought and, and it's been fan, absolutely fantastic. I, I wish we had the, um, the barrel proof here because I think if the, if the small batch is anything to go off, then I can imagine that the barrel proof is going to be absolutely incredible. It's dynamite. It is. Yeah. It absolute is dynamite. the bottle of wow. That there, there is yeah, no yeah. other way of saying it. Have you got, uh, um, Alan, have you got a bottle of the small batch there as well? No. I've only been no. buying the, the barrel proof. I, but the only, the, only, the only way I can get the barrel proof now is to buy it at auction. I can't, I can't buy it anywhere. I have to go to uh, the auction. You can, pick up, you can mess, pick up the latest edition <laughs> on um, Master of Malt. Well, um, every time I you get them, they're pretty much sold out. So it's yeah, every I mean, time I it's when I'm looking, I'm looking but... for it, it's not available. But I tend to get good prices. Hit and miss at auction. Sometimes you just land lucky if there's like ten or twelve bottles in auction. It can I could pick it up for about forty quid, fifty quid. Nice. Which is super. But then what again, and the full auction, hundred. Say again. What auction site do you use? Uh, use the Scottish Whiskey Auctions. Okay. And I do whiskey auction years, there's two of them, they're both up in Scotland. Yeah. Uh, but I've got lots and lots of bottles, man. And you can pick up some real bargains. If you look at it, if you, if you spend the time in sifting through everything, you can pick up bargains. Cool. Uh, yeah. lots and lots of bargains. I'd, I'd be curious to see what you think of, the, um, say, the difference between the small batch and the barrel proof, since you, or say, even for you, Chris, since you've both tried the, um, the barrel proof. I'd be interested to see how you guys find the small batch. Yeah, definitely. I think um, Harrison... So I can, is, for me, I can imagine that the... Just turn the heat up, Andrew. Just turn, sorry? The, turn the heat up. Yeah, well, that's what I was just about to say. Yeah. I can imagine that the, uh, like, the flavours in this are quite intense. I mean, this is the first time that I'm actually getting um, like that cherry note from... A bourbon, so I've gotten say the cherry, the apple, vanilla, caramel. Um, it's very oaky as well. It's actually quite salty as well. I'm surprised that um, I've added a couple of drops of water to this as well, and it's just it has actually increased the spiciness. Um, but I can imagine that the barrel proof would be a much more amplified version of of this 
Because I remember even watching your video, Alan, of the um, the barrel proof, and you were saying that when you opened the bottle, the uh, the aroma of it just filled oh, the room. everywhere. The whole room was full of it. It has a similar effect to like something like the Freud or Ardbeg does when you when you leave it for a bit in the room. The whole room just smells of it. Yeah, I mean, we had uh, when I at the whiskey tasting, the Scotch Test Dummies were over. We had our last whiskey was the Bunahaven Moina Oloroso. Yeah, Ooh. yeah, which is absolutely incredible, smoky, sweet, just a beautiful, beautiful whiskey. But that ECBP just we went back to it, and it just still blew it out of the water. One of those things. I think they're different whiskeys, Chris. I oh, think yeah, that's... yeah, they're incredibly different. But... I think they're, they're very, very different. Obviously, when you go to a whiskey tasting, they're very much, well, you leave the peat and smoke to the... Yeah. Because uh, it's so Ooh, overpowering. Yeah. But then... He just... Wiped that out as well, to be honest. Yeah. Smoke in my mouth after drinking it. Cool. Was that the last one you done the ECPP? No, it was it was the like last... the third to last or second to last. So oh, right. the 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 the, the Bunhaven was the last one because right. it was the smoky peaty one. Peaty one. So, but yeah, ECPP that is <laughs> mental good, mental. But I've heard uh, good things about stag juice. Okay. It may be a bit more under the radar, because that's that's basically the same thing. But stag, JT stag. I think the the stag I think is um, under Buffalo Trace, isn't it? Hmm. Well, this, this, I've got a stag junior here to try in one of my ah. videos later on. It's Sixty-four point nine. Exactly. Yeah. Stag yeah. So it's it's up there with the same ABV. And it's yeah. sort of maybe around the same price. I think maybe slightly cheaper. And I yeah. think you can get the Stag Junior in the UK a bit easier than the CBP. Ah, uh, right. Which is quite yeah, not. Sort of interesting. Uh, we've got uh, Whiskey Jason in now as well. Hi, Whiskey Jason. Good and yeah, Arvind. We actually have seven, seven people watching now. <laughs> I've got eight. Eight. I've got eight. Oh. <laughs> I better do. I better do a refresh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whew. Hey, Katie Chopper, who's saying what here then? Yeah. Hi, Jason. Yeah. Thanks for popping in. What else? We ain't got any questions. I think um, when it comes to the, I'd say to whiskey tastings, obviously like a lot of people will say to you to uh, make sure you keep your peated stuff to the end or your higher ABV um, whiskies to the end. But I think there's been a couple of things that I've been seeing lately where they also recommend that with um, rye as well. I know yeah. you've been doing a few rye videos yourself now, Chris. Would you agree with that? Like. If you were to do like a tasting of bourbons, would you find that yeah, having those rye um, whiskies are definitely something you would want to keep towards the end, or are they okay? Uh, rye is slightly different. Uh, they're only ever so slightly different. They give spi that spicy, peppery kick at the beginning. You know, um, I think yeah, you'd be looking. I always more... think that minty. Sorry. I always find it minty. Yeah. The rye. Yeah, yeah. There's a mm. also a, a, camp, a spear a campfire. Yeah. Yeah, that sort of um, vegetable, veg, vegetable. Um. Yeah. I I put them in there. I think yeah. The, the higher ABVs. Um. You you'd want last. Um, like Mark's just said, he's struggling to um, enjoy 40 percenters now, which is yeah. sort of a, I agree with. Well, yeah, agree with. 
I mean, I've just I just finished uh, finished filming a video on Friday and I've just been editing it. That's why I was so uh, tardy with my <laughs> answering your phone calls. <laughs> um, but yeah, the 40 percent was lackluster in the um, range of um, whiskies that I was tasting uh, for the video. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's such a difficult thing to do a tasting, isn't it? It's um, I mean, the tasting we had was, I mean, completely off the wall and completely weird and different. I think to any other tasting that you'd probably want to do. I mean, we started off with a, what a, a forty-year-old Canadian club, uh, and then everything else was just over. Um, yeah, everything else was just cast strength from then on. So it was just a bit weird. It was. It wasn't. Well, those were all there. They were all epiphanies, weren't they? They were all, they were all the, yeah. the epiphany ones, weren't they? But we had the yeah, we had that iron root, um, which was over fifty percent. Um, that was really nice, and that was obviously only matured for like twenty nine months on the bottle. Um, that was goes back again to what we were saying earlier about um weather and, and things like that. Um, that Texas heat just yeah makes that maturation period so short. Yeah, it's the same in Australia as well. I mean, uh, I know. I think in Australia, I think uh, to to be legally called whiskey in Australia, I think the um, the spirit has to be aged for a minimum of two years, and I think that's pretty much similar. Um, our climate conditions, I think, are very similar to that of uh, say the US where uh, we get those extreme temperatures so obviously the aging process is um, is a lot faster um, now I know from when I've had the say the Starwood Australian whiskies I mean they they are bottled at about 41 percent um, but when you drink those uh, they punch a lot um, higher than what they than what they feel. I mean, obviously, I'll have some forty percent whiskies now, and because I'm so, I know I've gotten more used to the higher ABVs. Just like you guys, I mean, I'll have a forty percent. I'm going, ah, damn, I come on, that could be a lot better ABV. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but then sometimes you have some that completely blow you away. I mean, yesterday, for example, trying that, um, that Basil Hayden's. I mean, that was forty percent. Um, but that had quite an interesting flavor to it and it felt a lot stronger than what it was. And then on the other end of the spectrum, I mean, I bought the, the Elijah Craig, um, that's at 47%. And obviously it is a lot more complex. There's more to the flavor, but the, the feel of the ABV I find is actually lower than what the feel of the, the Basil Hayden's was. So it's it's interesting to see how you can have um, those variations in the in how you perceive the taste of the ABV as well. Whiskey Jason saying don't compare the US climate to Australia, yeah. but rather Texas to Australia. And I, I lied, Jason. It's yeah. not uh, Icarus. It's Hubris. Straight corn. Look at that. Twenty nine months aged. Crazy stuff. I tried one of those um Star Wars in a shop, uh and Andrew, and it was three years old and it tasted about ten years old. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, like I said, they they taste a lot older than what they are. Uh, but yeah, I have to agree. I should have um, said that myself with Whiskey Jason's comment um, there. I mean, obviously, if you're going to go for a Tasmanian whiskey, I mean, that's um, that will probably have a much more of a feel of, say, a typical Scottish uh, whiskey. It is a much colder climate down there. Uh, in Victoria, where Starwood is made, that state gets four seasons in one day. 
it's unbelievable. You'll have hot, you'll have cold, you'll have wet, you'll have dry. It's um, England. Is that yeah. Sullivan's <laughs> Cove? Is that Sullivan's Cove down in Tasmania? Yeah, Sullivan's Cove is the Tasmanian one. Yeah. Yeah. Again, one that's probably that's too expensive for me to buy. I keep looking at it on the shelf and I think, oh God, why does it have to be over a hundred dollars for the bottle? Wow. <laughs> that's what happens when you win World Whiskey of the Year. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, that's what happens. <laughs> Oh, look, I know we get the opposite end over here. I mean, I, I've seen Australian wines. Um, I, don't, I don't know if you guys get it in the UK because I've seen this in Japan and the US. Um, there's an Australian wine here. It's called Yellow uh, Yellowtail. Yeah, we get that. Uh, the, the, the label is a kangaroo yeah. on the bottle. And Bonza. it's cheaper overseas than what it is in Australia. Oh, really? <laughs> I mean, we we make the damn thing. I mean, it's made in <laughs> it's it's made in our country, and yet I have to go overseas to get it for a cheaper price. <laughs> yeah, and there's there's better Australian wine uh, as well, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, look, see, I, I reckon Yellowtail is still a pretty good drop, but yeah, like there are there are better wines and for a cheaper price as well, but. Yeah, I, I don't understand why I have to go overseas to get a cheaper Australian yeah. product. But yeah, it's a very yeah contentious subject as well, isn't it? I mean, it's they can get um, like in the US, you obviously, they can obviously get bourbons. I mean, crazy cheap compared to over here. So, I think what how much how much is ECBP in America? It's like forty fifty quid. Forty forty dollars, yeah, man. Like and it, yeah, it's like double the price here. Um, but if you then go vice of like the other way, uh, Scotch is obviously much uh, more expensive for them uh, than it is for us. So we can pick up Scotch a bit cheaper than they can. Um, sort of that way. But Australia, yeah, it just seems to be a bit of a weird one where it's it doesn't matter what. <laughs> I was just going through one, some of these bourbon samples that have been sent, and there's one there. There's the Henry McKenna ten year old bottled and bond, mm. and that that was going for about twenty eight dollars, yeah. and that that's just one best spirit in the world. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's mad. But yeah, we try and get that here. I mean, I I've, I've looked at them and I thought, oh yeah, I'd fancy trying that. And, yeah. yeah. So hard to get it in the UK. I think they're struggling. I think they're struggling to get it there because it's all in. It's all single casks. Yeah, I think, I think they've think sold out there. a lot, haven't they? I think. Um, I think Dave has been um, hitting the source a bit too much today. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think he's. I think he's on the right track. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think he's. I think he's. There's not a thing wrong with him, man. He's bang on. <laughs> He's saying Andrews looks handsome. What are you reading? <laughs> oh, but he says he's not as handsome as me. Oh, okay. Well, well that He's is true on every level. Every level, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Chris is about to break the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki said hi. So look at that. Hashtag Chris Moore just took over the Kardashians. <laughs> no. <laughs> My arse is probably as big. Anthony, tell Nikki, I, tell Nikki I said hi. Yeah. I don't think there is a Nikki Kardashian. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about the oh, Nikki. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the, the whiskey team, you, Chris, can't get with it, what? mate. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, you're missing me. We'll do. There is now. Neil, what? I don't, what did we say? I don't know. What. No, I don't know. Come on, Dave. Get in on the chat. <laughs> is, is it is it too late for him to join in? Hey, you can pop in if he really wants to. Uh, all you got to do is Skype me. I can fit you on the screen. Yeah. Cool thing. <laughs> oh, Nikki Kardashian. <laughs> <laughs> nice. 
It seems like there's a new Kardashian being born every day. <laughs> there probably is. They're probably like a weird genetic breeding program. Yeah. What have we gone off piece? Have you tried that yet, Alan? Have you drunk any of... What? Which one? tried that glass yet? Or are you just smelling it? What's the taste like? Oh, I'm trying it. It's, it's nice, but I, I can't stop smelling it, man. <laughs> every, every time I smell it, it's different. It's just, it's awesome. But no, it's, it tastes nice. I'm a wee taste now that you're fast, matey. So. Go on. Yes. Jolly good. So we've hit the 54 minute mark yeah. now, apparently. <laughs> 54 minutes. That's a good go in for a, a test. <laughs> yeah. How's the mic doing? Seems alright. I think everybody's liking the audio. How's everybody liking my audio? See what that comes in as. <laughs> Whiskey Wims now is just saying that they're, they're sticking around because of all the handsome men. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I wonder if there's a... The unfortunate thing is you can't tell if there's sarcasm in a text message. <laughs> uh, you can on that one. Definitely can in that one. Stuart, you've probably... Stuart's probably noticed that I've took my RNs down <gasps> because he keeps, telling, he keeps telling me to open them, so I've had to take them away <laughs> out of sight, man, just in case I opened one. Nice. <laughs> is, is there any reason why you're not opening them at all, Alan? Yeah, they're collectible at the minute, man. They're probably worth more clothes than they are autumn. <laughs> yeah. It's just saying 100% sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. J uh, Whiskey Jason saying, oh, all is fine. Uh, little echo in Australia, but. But we, we yeah, think. I, I have a feeling the echo, for me, I think it's probably coming from the yeah. room. I mean, quite an. And, um, tiled space so uh, uh, I'm probably getting a lot of sound bouncing off the walls yeah same here I'm in a shed that seems to be bouncing off all the walls as well I'm sitting on yeah <laughs> yeah that's right I, I speak in echo echo, <laughs> echo. That's, what, that's what Dave's just said that's just Andrew's voice <laughs> yeah <laughs> Uh, uh, bouncing off the pizzas. Oh, he's ribbing you now, man. It's not happening, he's Stuart. Ribbing you now. It's not happening, Stuart. <laughs> Find it easier to talk to him here rather than type yeah. away at him. <laughs> Alan is just fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? So Whiskey Wims is asking, what have you replaced the Aaron with, um, Alan? Uh, I think I've put some, I've put <laughs> some spring banks in their place. Alan. Put some spring banks in their place. I should definitely drink them as well. <laughs> yeah, some spring banks and some long rows, so they are, they are filled hey, what, the gap. Why don't you open up those Macallan editions? <laughs> no, 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 no. That, that ain't happening either, mate. <laughs> It, it looks like you've got a couple of rows of them there going on. Just, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was thinking of doing a McCallum video. That that one there is worth a thousand pounds. <laughs> yeah, I, my oh. video idea was uh, <laughs> oh. the cheapest McCallum. <laughs> wow. Well, that ain't going to be cheap. I know, exactly, yeah, right? <laughs> I'm, gonna be Alan, I'm, I'm calling you on this one, mate. Okay. You said that when you started um, your whiskey journey that yes. you were buying as a collector. Yes. And then you just got to the point where you started to realize, you know what, I've got all these whiskeys. I might as well start drinking them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but there comes a point where if you open a bottle of whiskey that costs you £79 and it's now worth a £1,000 and it's, it ain't worth it. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I was just watching this um, rerun of a of a Simpsons episode yesterday, and it was the one when Marge started drinking. Uh, she, uh, Marge started drinking with Homer when they started drinking wine, 
and they they go into the into Mo's tavern and they go, oh Mo, we'll, we'll have a wine. And he goes, oh wine. He goes, oh, I only have this old stuff here. He goes, here, here you go. He pours them a glass, charges them four dollars for the glass, and it was a bottle of Chateau Latour 1886. <laughs> Uh, he ended up having to check his little wi um, wine guide and realize that he just opened up a highly expensive bottle of wine. <laughs> uh, we've got we got whiskey. Jason is asking, "What's your best bourbon so far?" Mine's that's easy. Mine's ECBP, easy. I'm about to break. <laughs> 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 I'll bite them and I'll just type them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the first the first bourbon I ever tasted was ECBP, and I'm I've just started trying a few more bourbons just to see if I can find anything. My quest is to find something as good as that. that that's the a, task I've set quest. myself. That's where uh, Anthony is just asking here, or he's just saying that. Um, I just don't ever think about drinking bourbon as a dram. And I remember, say, for myself, I, I used to agree 100%. Um, probably, I guess, one of the first bourbons that I ever had was obviously the, the Jack Daniels. And unfortunately, I remember being subjected to Southern Comfort. And I remember that just being absolutely horrible. In general, I don't like overly sweet things. And having that Southern Comfort to me was like drinking a, a liquid form of bubble gum. It was absolutely horrible and it turned me off drinking bourbon for a long, long time. Until recently, uh, last year, uh, my cousin actually bought me back this bottle of bourbon from New York. It was a New York based um, distillery called Van Brunt. And they had their own uh, wheated bourbon. And when I was able to try that, that just put me onto a, onto like a bourbon um, trend now. And now uh, I love bourbon. <laughs> I never thought that I would be able to come back around. But after having that, I realized that, you know what, bourbon is worthwhile drinking. Um, and to the point where now I will happily have it as a dram. I, I know for me, um, if I'm drinking, say, scotch, I like to drink scotch and explore scotch. Um, for me, I haven't really reached that point in um, with bourbon. But for me, I find that bourbon is like comfort whiskey. It's the comfort food of the whiskey, uh, of the whiskey world. It's like when you come home, and you want something easy or just something that's going to make you feel at home and comfortable, pour yourself a glass of bourbon and you've got something to just unwind and enjoy. Yeah, bourbon uh, is a lot. This is probably, yeah, probably I'll get comments for this, but bourbon's a lot less complex, isn't it? But, yeah, um, well, I've. I've it's. Yeah, it has its place, and you, yeah, and you still you still enjoy it. I mean, I, you know, I've done that Jim Beam single barrel, and I mean that's that was a great little bourbon. I mean, it, classic. You know, there was nothing new about it, but it it was really really good. Um, yeah, yeah, you can just sit down, and I mean, I Buffalo Trace. I just had, had bottles and bottles of Buffalo Trace, uh, and it's the go to yeah, bourbon. Yeah, Chris, when when you're looking. When you're looking for more complexity, I think you need to go to the, again, it's the, yeah, the bigger yeah, bottles. Well, I think your Stag Junior will probably give you some more complexity. Yeah. ECP's got lots of complexity, you know what I mean? So I think but it's, it's a case not of... it's as complex as some scotches. Mm -hmm. or, yeah. Or most scotches. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. Um, and again, Anthony, he's asking, um, do you think bourbon is overlooked as a dram? I would say for yes and no. I think it depends on what side of the fence you're sitting on. If, say, you're from the US or you're in another country um, where, say, you just prefer drinking bourbon, then no. 
But if you're a scotch drinker, uh, then definitely, yes. I know I overlooked bourbon. Um, and I'm sure um, Alan and even you, Chris, at some stage, up, probably up until more recently, probably um, didn't think much of bourbon until you started to find ones that you actually enjoyed. And now, again, that you've found the... Uh, the ECBP. I mean, you would you would happily sit there with a bottle of that all day and just be um, enjoying it. So, like I said, Anthony, I think it just depends on what side of the fence you're sitting on. Yeah, no, I've, think- I've decided to do them just because I just want to try some bourbons. I've, as I say, you're right. I've I've given them a miss. I've just never come across them. Um, see, only recently I came across whiskey in the last two or three years. So it's. I've just decided now I'm going to have a wee go with bourbon and see how they how they fare up and how they match up. I still think I'm going to prefer the scotch, but um, but I just want to try some bourbon. See, we'll see what they're all raving about over there. <laughs> Actually, that's, um, that's one thing that I would find, I think, interesting to do, uh, say, as, especially as a live stream uh, video. Um, would be to have, say, somebody that's predominantly a scotch drinker and um, have somebody that's predominantly a bourbon drinker and just to have a a discussion about what it is that you don't like about the other other whiskey. Um, I'd be curious to see what what comments you would get. Because Obviously, say coming from a Scotch perspective, I've always found that um, bourbon is not as complex as um, Scotch. Uh, but then, for some, when I, I don't know, say for me, when I see it, when you're drinking a bourbon that's not as complex as a Scotch, you would think that you would want to try more Scotches because they are more complex. But I don't know. That could just be my own narrow-minded way of thinking as well. I'm listening to you, mate. <laughs> Try to type at the same time. Uh, no ignoring you. Yeah, I think. Yeah, just try everything. I mean, what's, what's, what's the problem? Try what you can get your hands on. Nothing to lose, have you? <laughs> uh, Whiskey Jason's asking what's shit. the name of the distillery from New York? Uh, Van Van Brunt. I'll type it in the comments. Van Brunt. Oh. Well, I think obviously that's been a good test <laughs> of my mic. Yeah. Uh, we call it a day. I mean, it's. Might been... have to do another one and taste my new mic. Your new mic. Might do another one and taste my yeah, new yeah, mic. We'll have to do another one to taste your new mic. Yeah. Uh. So yeah. Um. Yeah. Should we call it quits? Happy to call it quits. Yeah. Get on a little yeah. bit. You've got to start work, Andrew. No? I'm sure the sun <laughs> is about. To I actually out. have. A, I actually have a day off today, so that's a good thing. <laughs> Right, okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's have a quick, quick look in the chat. Uh, Mark Slinger, what was causing the previous echoes? Uh, it was sort of me, but sort of everyone. It was mainly me. It was my fault, really. Well, not my fault, but I, I'm just getting used to the software and... Uh, I think, every, I think everyone was blaming me, but I've not done anything any different. I know. I think they just, was, yeah. I <laughs> it was. It was. I was like, blaming myself. It was. <laughs> it was me not knowing how to work the software properly. That's the reason why. But obviously, I have fixed that, and now the audio is all good. Now uh, Andrew's just got to find a place where he's got an echo. Um, I think he's just going to walk around with some foam around his head or something like that. <laughs> Is and, that going to uh, be more so for a visual improvement or an audio improvement? <laughs> just the audio. Audio is key, Andrew. You should know this. <laughs> Being on YouTube. 
Nobody cares about the picture, it's all about the audio. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I've, I've got to give some I've got to give the people something to talk about and to complain about, you know. I mean if people aren't complaining then we're doing something wrong. I mean, no, we I'm want sure at least one or two thumbs down in there saying, oh, that Aussie guy can't even fix his damn audio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, they complain yeah. about my shiny, sweaty head. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're lucky that Dave isn't here because then you'll be getting solar flares. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I'm sure we'll comment down. on that in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. So, uh, thank you everybody for watching. Uh, it's been great. Thank you for coming in the chat. I uh, really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, just another little informal. And another last drop. We're going to be trying to do it a bit more structured uh, and we'll promote it more throughout the weeks. Now we've got the audio Definitely. fixed and everything like that. We'll get some good solid topics to talk about uh, and yeah, and get some notes on. Get our notes written down and stuff like that. That'd be good. Uh, and a few other ideas coming up. Uh, not maybe now, but, you know, a month or two down the line, we'll be surprises maybe. So, uh, with that... And, and now we even have Antonio from the Whiskey Quest in the group as well. So, we're yeah, yeah. we're expanding. <laughs> Stuart, Stuart contacted you, because I think Stuart wanted to Stuart try and get him. Stuart has contacted me. He's... Not said he wanted to come in, but he's going to send me a bottle or something. <laughs> oh, all right. For example, all right. Or something. But, uh, yeah, Stuart's more than welcome to come in. Uh, we'll try. Yeah, we can get as many YouTubers as possible. Um, within reason, of course. How many do you reckon you'll be able to fit on the screen, Chris? Well, I think a Skype call can be eight. Oh, okay. Uh, but I. Fitting eight people on the screen, that's going to be... It's easy. I can do it. Um, yeah. But I just think that would be quite a, a fest of heads. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want, like, uh, bubble heads on the dashboard. Little heads <laughs> going across the screen, you know? But, you know well, I've just, been, I've just been looking at Andrew in full screen here the whole the whole time I've been on. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's no bad thing, is it, Alan? Likewise, uh, likewise, Alan. <laughs> so anyway, I've, I've been seeing your face just going from white to red progressively as the night has gone by. <laughs> oh yeah, that must be the heat. This must be the heat of this whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> Andrew, Andrew, finish it for us. Go on. And that's the last drop. <laughs> <laughs> So, That's or, or do you voice. want me to do? Or do you want me to do my Indian Allen voice? <laughs> no, I, I thought you were going to do your finish of whatever it was. But, <laughs> I can't remember. Oh well, that's the last drop. Yep. <laughs>